Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, July 1st, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python and other projects. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. Final notes document includes timestamps to go along with this video, so you can use a doc skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. Meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. First is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is the state of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. Third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what we've you've been doing the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, we'll get started with community news. All right, and some highlights. Feather of the Day launched. Feather of the Day celebrates the Adafruit Feather ecosystem of programmable boards. Each day, a new Feather board will be highlighted on the Adafruit blog. And then the Bootloader is a monthly podcast loading you up with news, project updates, and product talk from the CircuitPython and Maker communities, hosted by Paul Cutler and Todd Kurt, both very active folks in our community. In the July 1st episode, Paul Cutler and Todd Kurt discuss new tutorial videos from Professor John Gallagher about using CircuitPython with PyCharm and how to use CircUp to update CircuitPython libraries. In addition to other topics, the show also includes an interview with Justin Myers, the author of the new CircuitPython library connection manager. And of course, Justin does a lot of work um, in general in CircuitPython. And Project of the Week, the SPOKE, all caps, capacitive touch board. Tom Fox's SPOKE board is an easy way to add up to 26 touch sensors to projects for interaction. Anything of capacitive potential can be controlled, connected to the pins and used to control computer inputs. Create your own USB MIDI device, game controller, key mapper, or other computer interface device by attaching metallic objects, conductive inks, conductive threads, fruits, plants, vegetables, cutlery, car keys, mushrooms, etc., or use as a standalone device. The custom circuit board houses a Raspberry Pi Pico. USB MIDI and keyboard are accommodated via CircuitPython code, and the resources for this project are available on GitHub, its own project, website, YouTube, and also the Adafruit blog. This and more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to a newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, mention Anne Engineer on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is community news. 
Next up is the state of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. So first up, overall, there were 16 pull requests merged by 13 authors, and there were seven reviewers, 19 closed issues by 11 people, and 12 opened by 11 people. And now we'll hear from Scott about the core. Can you hear me? I'm on my phone, so we'll see. Um, OK, so numbers for the core. We had five pull requests merged from four different authors. Um, Stone Hippo and El Eric Almendras are both infrequent authors, so thanks to them. We had four reviewers, Bill ADT, um, is also infrequent, so thanks to Bill for doing some reviews. Uh, we have 25 open, open pull requests. Um, many, many, many of these are old, so we're going to have to go through those and purge them soon. Um, but we are under our one-page limit. Uh, we have nine closed issues by three people and six opened by five people, so we're net down three, which is great, and uh, a good number of folks involved. We have 693 open issues. Uh, you can go to the URL, uh, github.com slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython slash issues to see those. Uh, we use milestones to track um, prioritization for Adafruit funded folks. Um, and the kind of core target that we're looking at is 9.1, uh, which has three open issues. And that's primarily what Dan's been working on. Um, we have no open issues for 8.2x or 9.0x. So that means that our stable releases seem to be pretty stable. Um, Otherwise, we have two issues not assigned to Milestone, so a little bit of triage to do. But besides that, uh, we're looking good. That's it for the core. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Tim about the libraries. All right. Thanks, Liz. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries. Uh, which can all be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these libraries tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with a particular piece of hardware, or helper libraries that allow you to code your project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the complex details. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had 11 pull requests merged by nine authors. Uh, the names in here that are uh, newer or less frequent to me is uh, M. Carpiars, and uh, let me see, I didn't bold it, but KB Ram I think is a uh, an infrequent one. I know I've seen before, but not uh, not all the time. So thanks to them. Um, and then uh, I think the rest of these names are a little bit more familiar to me, uh, popping up um, from week to week. But thanks to all of those uh, more typical uh, suspects as well. In terms of reviewers, we had four reviewers this week. Thanks to myself, uh, Brent, Dan, and Liz for doing some reviews in libraries this week. Uh, of the pull requests that got merged, the oldest one was 92 days, and the newest uh, handful were all one day. That leaves us with 50 open pull requests across all the libraries. The oldest one is a draft at 683 days, and the newest one is one day. Uh, over the past week, we had seven issues closed by six people, with six new issues opened up by six people. Uh, and that leaves us with a total of 860 open issues across all the libraries. And there are 103 of those that are marked as good first issues, uh, which you would be able to find over on, excuse me, circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the page that you should head to if you are interested in getting involved in contributing uh, to CircuitPython. Uh, on that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Um, if you uh, want to get started, you can go through the list of PRs, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware to test, uh, click through over to GitHub and take a look at the code and the PR. Um, can kind of take a look uh, at the actual syntax and the code itself and spelling and comments and all that sort of stuff. If you do have the hardware, go ahead and give it a try on that hardware and then leave a comment on GitHub letting us know how it went and what you found uh, when you look through the code. 
If you uh, do that a couple of times, get comfortable with the process, we can get you leveled up to leave official uh, reviews on GitHub as well. Uh, if you want to jump in and actually start trying to do some coding yourself, you can click over to the list of issues on that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, where you find a list of all the open issues. Again, look through there, find something that's interesting to you or that you've got the hardware to, uh, to work on. Click through and then uh, go ahead and... Um, uh, attempt to implement whatever the, the issue is. So fix the bug or add the feature or whatever uh, is documented in that particular issue and open up a PR with your changes. Um, we do have guides for contributing to uh, CircuitPython with Git and GitHub. So if you are new to that process, we can help you out uh, with some resources there. We also have folks who are around um, throughout the week on Discord who are willing to help folks who are trying to get spun up. So if you would like to contribute, but you feel there's some gap in your knowledge that you need help with, uh, please feel free to come on to the Discord. Uh, let us know what you're working on, and uh, I'm sure there will be folks who are more than happy to help uh, get you started. We want everyone to be able to contribute uh, in whatever way works for them. Uh, in terms of the library PyPI uh, weekly download stats, we had... Let's see, 114,474 downloads uh, of the 330 total libraries. Um, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look. And then new and updated libraries this week are the HX711 requests. And then over in the community bundle, the CircuitPython TOML library. And that's what we've got for libraries. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Tim. And now we'll hear from Melissa about Blinka. Melissa, are you able to read? Okay, I'm not sure if Melissa is able to be on. So um, Blinka is our compatibility layer for circuit Python on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. Um, and this week there were zero pull requests merged, but there are six open pull requests currently, three closed issues by two people and zero new issues. There are currently 99 open issues. Uh, PyPy downloads this week, uh, last week rather, were 13,374. Uh, PyWheels downloads in the last month, 18,706. And number of supported boards, 133. And that is the state of Blinka and in CircuitPython and the libraries as well. And next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're a text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. And I will kick things off. Um, Hug Report to Jepler for discovering CI issues in the Learn re repo last week and assisting with fixes and also a group hug. And then I'll read for C. Grover, who is text only as a hug report for DJ Devon 3 for exploring the frontiers of APIs and documenting his journey in Adafruit Playground. Has been very helpful for the conver conversion from openweathermap.org to weather.gov's NWS API. I should check that out as well. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay, uh, thanks uh, to Snakey Maker Cat, who's been very helpful in Discord over the past uh, number of months. And uh, We've made them a uh, Discord helper. That's there are several categories, but uh, they're kind of all the same. So they're uh, now recognized for their uh, contributions and have a different name thing, and all can also participate inside discussions between the helpers. Okay. Great, thank you. And now I'll read for DJ Devon three, uh, Trevor for the new It's a Snap iOS Adafruit IO mobile app. Deshipu, Toddbot, Alpakenin, and Bear for helping me with a display.io.groups object syntax issue in Discord. It was user error, but I still want to blame the object for not accepting a list. And a group hug. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Johnny Bergdahl for sharing a really good idea for a way to check on whether a file exists with the BLE workflow by... Uh, just trying to request to read zero bytes of the file, uh, and it returns back the header that will give you an error if it doesn't exist. So that was a really nice suggestion. Thanks to Johnny for that. Um, Paul Cutler for uh, some Discord moderation over the weekend. 
um, to Deshipu. Uh, thanks for sharing a neat uh, technique for rotating uh, bitmaps efficiently. Uh, this one might have been a couple of weeks back, but um, it was a, a really neat thing that I hope to implement in Display.io at some point, and then uh, a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Jepler. Hello, I have a group hug, uh, of course, but I also wanted to specifically thank Dan for helping out so many people on the dev channel, PRs and issues. And uh, one for Justin for some quick feedback on a somewhat rambling issue I filed in Adafruit request this morning about direct access to the socket object. Great, thank you. And now we'll hear from Melissa. Hello, so I just wanted to give a hug to Dan for testing the updated CircuitPython code editor and group hug to everyone else. Thank you. And last but not least, we'll hear from Scott. Hi, thanks, Liz. Uh, hug again to Paul Cutler for deleting some Discord spam and banning the account that did it. Uh, hug to Randall, Randall Sharp for the PR to add spy target support. Um, it's not every day that we actually get additional or modified API requests from third-party folks, so it's super cool to see that happening. Um, and then uh, another repeat uh, thanks to Snakey Maker Cat for joining Discord helpers, but also to Dan for looking out for folks for uh, to add to that uh, new role. Great, thank you. And that was Hug Reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple minutes, talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. And with that, I will get started. So most of last week, I worked on the board design for the ESP32 S2 IKEA Vindrickning drop-in board. Uh, the boards are already in Boston as of this morning, so they should be arriving tomorrow. And I've also been working on a product guide for the new Feather RP2040 Ada Logger. This is another RP2040 Bones board with a micro SD card slot on the back. And the guide just went live, so if you have the board, be sure to check it out. And next is C. Grover, who I believe I'm reading for. Uh, wor yeah, <laughs> working to improve Wi-Fi internet reliability on ESP32 S2 for feeding AIO from various APIs, primarily the extremely free weather.gov data, no account or key required. Incorporating automatic AIO feed throttling has helped tremendously. Have seen a few 40 plus hour non-interrupted sessions. When it does fail, the code automatically recovers thanks to advice from all the try accept examples out there in the process of writing up a weather.gov how-to on Adafruit Playground. And now we'll hear from Dan. OK, so I'm just working on remaining 910 bugs. In particular, there's an Espressif BLE bug that is advertising related and seems to cause the whole system to slow down tremendously. But I think I have a fix for that. And then I'm looking at the other couple of ones. So I had set up. A few weeks ago, maybe we'll have a release candidate soon, and maybe I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel again. I hope. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. And now I'll read for DJ Devin 3. Uh, push to PR updating the Ratio API example to only use one request instead of two. This allows 1,700 requests per day instead of 850. So working on the Ratio, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> touchscreen menu project. I love playing with GUIs and APIs. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, uh, thanks, Liz. Um, so for the past week or so, mostly I've been working on the BLE workflow integration for uh, Circup slash WW Shell. Um, I completed the downloading of files and the uploading of files uh, in the last couple of days. Um, I thought that I had the Makedir working in order to create directories, but it turns out it's actually getting stuck in an infinite loop um, after it creates a directory. So it uh, sort of works, but still needs still needs some help. Um, and then I'm working on uploading directories today, so being able to actually copy not only the, the top-level directory, but all the contents inside of it. Uh, and I am uh, aiming for an implementation that can reuse the, the bleak client connection uh, instead of just sticking the, the upload single file in a for loop, which would cause it to disconnect and reconnect, because it seems like the actual connection process is 
uh, one of the slower bits. So uh, I'm making uh, making some progress, but um, also getting bogged down a bit by some some weird issues uh, with the infinite loop. But uh, we will get there in the end. Um, I the the stuff outside of that that I did was just reviewing a couple PRs on libraries and a small fix in the uh, library bundle repo. And then uh, just a note that I will be filling in on a deep dive this Friday. So come and hang out Friday afternoon if folks are uh, interested. Uh, probably we'll still be doing some BLE work then. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Foamy Guy. And now we'll hear from Jepler. Hi again. So it's a pretty short week for me. I'm just uh, working today and Wednesday. When I'm working, it's on a guide about MP3 playback, including streaming. It'll also cover the question of which microcontrollers work best for MP3s. I still need to test on the original ESP32 to see how well uh, or poorly that works. And uh, while writing up the code, I realized that I'm using an undocumented API of Adafruit requests to start a request or, and get the socket object out of the response. And so I, what I've ended up doing is filing a pull request that will just officially document that. It's an extension to the standard request API that isn't available on desktop. But uh, I think it turns out sometimes you need these things if you want to grab the socket and interact with the data that it has. Standard uh, desktop Python has a thing called .raw, but the semantics of it are just a little bit different. And you can read a related issue if you're uh, really interested in finding out more about that. And of course, if you have an opinion, we'd love to uh, hear or like a different way of addressing it. I'd love to hear on the issue or on the pull request. Um, and that, yeah, is basically what's on my mind for right now. Awesome. Thank you. Looking forward to testing out the MP3 stuff. And now we'll hear from maker Melissa. <laughs> Hello. So I was out, or this for the last two weeks because I was out on vacation last week. Uh, I finished up the changes to the code editor uh, and got those integrated in. Uh, I started working on a guide for the USB workflow for that, and I also need to fix a couple of things that are broken uh, for folks this week, and that's it. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Scott. Hello. Uh, it's a short week for me because I'm out Thursday and Friday. Uh, I also got sick over the weekend, as you may be able to hear, so I'm recovering from that. And lastly, Ari is going to a new daycare today, so I'm picking him up uh, for a half day just to get his to dip his toes in the water instead of going into the deep end of being there all day. So just a short week. Um, so I'm just keeping up with emails and reviews and uh, going to do some fun stuff doing the Stemma G0 work, uh, which I've been thinking about as a like next version of Seesaw sort of thing. Specifically, you know, in the cases where you have a lot of different sliders and, and inputs and things, um, thinking about doing multi-controller I squared C where all of the different inputs can write back to CircuitPython to say like, hey, this changed instead of CircuitPython having to loop through and, and test everything. I'm very curious to see if that would be a lot uh, quicker to to respond to inputs instead. So thinking about that. Great. Thank you. Hope you feel better. And I know personally I would really find that to be helpful with the STEM G0 stuff. Uh, and now we'll be, that was it for status updates. Next up will be in the weeds, which right now doesn't have a topic. So if while I'm reading the description, people have things, add them. In the Weeds is an opportunity for long-form discussions that either come of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not weighing around to see if anyone has topics. However, today we don't have any topics. So I think with that, we are going to wrap up. This has been CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, July 1st, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. 
This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can find, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.